is our third week. Uh, the session will be mainly focusing on cultural and creative industries in the Caucasus. And we have a constellation of amazing speakers. Among them, um, well, the moderator is Terry Sandel. He is a very known figure in creative uh, industries uh, who've been working extensively in our region, in Europe and internationally on advising on strategy and cultural policies. Um, we also are very um, happy and honored to have Mikhail Hlatki, uh, uh, who is the director of uh, create, sorry, um, uh, of Creative Industry Košice. And we already uh, sp uh, heard a little bit about the project from his uh, previous um, colleagues, um, Mikhail Krembara and also um, Christian Potiro. I think I, if I uh, made the pronunciation incorrectly, please uh, forgive me. So um, it's an amazing project and we are really happy to uh, learn more about it. Um, Gela Suli is our uh, uh, dear colleague and friend from Georgia. We as Tardino had a, a great honor to be a part of um, Academy uh, startup project that um, uh, Creative Caucasus initiated together with Creative Estonia last year. And since, since then we kept um, in touch with the Creative Caucasus organization of which Gela Suli is the founder and director. And today he's joining us from US. Uh, so we have like a truly international uh, three continent uh, meeting. Uh, from Azerbaijan, uh, we have a representative from the Ministry of Culture Ramila Bakirov, of whom, with whom I worked extensively uh, for a number of years, and uh, he's been in charge of a twinning advisory a project on um, supporting the Ministry of Culture of the Republic of, of uh, Azerbaijan in the modernization uh, policy and management systems a few years ago, and their counterpart was an Italian uh, Ministry of Culture. Um, he's also one of the um, members behind the project of Creative Azerbaijan. Um, and we have a practitioner, a very um, active member of cultural landscape uh, in Azerbaijan, Asmar Abdullaeva, who is uh, a founder of Creative Hub, Asma Art and uh, has been working extensively uh, in a number of sectors supporting um, our community with educational and uh, craft uh, development projects. So without any further ado, please, uh, the floor is yours, um, dear Terry, and I let you to uh, take over from me. I'm very much looking forward to the discussion uh, today. I want to start because I know we've got a, a, a big audience and they're of different um, backgrounds. So I'd like to start with the concept of cultural and creative industries and ask the panelists, perhaps starting with Michal, um, what he understands by cultural and creative industries. It should be said that in many countries, um, even when cultural and creative industries are an important part of policy, um, there's often um, a situation where people who are actually working in the cultural and creative industries don't actually realize that they are. There's also the thing of language um, that the um, term cultural and creative industries is sometimes um, not the um, most uh, helpful term in certain languages. So that for example, in Russian, um, the term cultural and creative industries conjures up um, the picture of huge factories and so on. So, Michal, would you like to start and um, get us on our way? Thank you very much, Terry. Uh, hello, everyone, dear colleagues. For us, we obviously, we follow the European Union guidelines mostly, but my personal understanding of cultural creative industries is that this encompass all the intellectual and talent-based activities of the humans, which brings 
together the, the products, services, heritage and understanding of what, what the common culture is for, for the certain territories, obviously. And uh, my personal view on creative industries is that the, this is something which is both sides that in a smaller scale, but when we talk about the, the, the scaling up or the, the bigger scales, like the industrial uh, understanding of the, of the term, then we very much talk about the using digital technologies and using the, the opportunities to distribute the IPs, uh, IP rights and what, what those uh, intellectual activities uh, provide to the wider audiences. So in terms of software development, games, all, all this is uh, for me as, as, a part of, as a part of creative industries as well. Asma, what, 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 what do you see as the concept of cultural and creative industries in the Azerbaijan context? Hi, everybody. I, uh, my opinion, first of all, in creative sectors and creative industries in Azerbaijan, it is really is very important part of uh, the uh, development of the country and the society, first of all. For me, it's uh, something special for the, um, you know, some sectors which to people can develop their um, talents, their, uh, uh, their ideas, concept, and how to create the new products, and um, I mean the products which they can sell, and earn money, it's very simple. And of course, for me, it's as if we uh, use the titles as the industries, it's sometimes in the, for the Azerbaijan and for special for the post-Soviet countries, it looks like uh, it's some big fabrics, or I don't know, this is big something uh, production uh, centers. Uh, but when we talk about the creative sectors and creative industries, it, first of all, it is a something's intellectual products. It is something's uh, um, uh, interesting and very, um, uh, uh, very um, useful for the society and for the peoples. And uh, in Azerbaijan, in creative industries, or maybe um, as the industries which to, can uh, bring a lot of money for the country, it's uh, something um, not uh, now is realistic, but when we talk about the, our um, some steps uh, which we try to do now in the with, uh, uh, with sectors, I think it's, it's something um, really looks uh, very success because it's uh, some small organization and small groups of artists and the people who would like to make their own products and would like to sell. And um, I think in the Azerbaijan and creative industries as uh, some uh, um, big power um, will be with this future years, I, I hope. And uh, uh, first of all, um, it's now it looks like a little bit uh, uh, idea and concept and not the think about uh, what how we can earn money from these sectors and now we um, part of create the some general idea what is the creative sectors in other region i'm not talking about the special for the crafts or designs or uh, idea and uh, different uh, type of the uh, industries. But what I see now, uh, and I work with uh, some creative people and uh, uh, we, uh, we um, uh, make the, some um, consulting uh, for the young artists and craftsmen designers and to try to give them some very simple um, structures, how they can open their own uh, business and how they can create the, some uh, good products and something we start, and uh, I think um, we uh, we have the good start. Thank you very much, Terry, and thank you, Ashley, and everyone for for this conference. You know, um, even the previous points and questions were very interesting. So I, I just wanted to maybe share a bit of my opinion about uh, what you talked already. So the, the question, uh, the first question, a very interesting question: What is creativity? What is creative industries for you? 
if you allow me, I will just briefly share my thoughts on, on this as well. Uh, yeah, so basically what I think is uh, creative, in, if we talk about creative industries, uh, it can be a new term. I mean, the creative industries is a new term starting from 1990s. I guess it's uh, people started to use it, especially in, the, in some Western countries. But the creative creativity is, uh, itself is, from my point of view, is the uh, is the global engine of development. It started with a, a creative person who invented the digging stick, I would say, and then another one who invented the uh, the wheel, and then it go, went on to add more and more. And uh, even um, if we talk about uh, the economic field of creative industries. Um, we always had uh, creative talents, um, uh, even 500,000 years ago, who were uh, creating some stuff and selling it in some different markets. So it was also creative industries from my point of view. And uh, what we had, uh, I think, during the uh, why, why most of the post-Soviet ca countries cha have challenges in, uh, in understanding this term of creative industries, because uh, creative industries is, is tightly linked with the economy and economy uh, was, uh, I would say, in mass economy was, was banned, banned during the Soviet times. So basically, people don't understand that they can make music and uh, earn a lot of money from it, or they can film something or they can uh, produce some other type of creative good and earn uh, earn from it and be a part of uh, national economy so this is the this is the difficult part of this to explain to people the benefits that are possible to gain from creative industries but another benefit i think uh, if we compare the creative economy with other types of, of economy is that um, uh, the uh, development of creative economy and creative fields uh, is the development of uh, I would say a nation, a country, but also a nation itself, because um, the, 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 the development of, I would say, for example, the music field of one country is uh, making this country and these peoples of the country and its culture uh, more strong, stronger. And it's the same about the film industry, the same about uh, all the other industries uh, which represent the creative, creative industries field. And that's why I think that states uh, start slowly understanding mostly uh, most of the post-Soviet countries uh, now uh, start understanding the, the potential of this field and look at this field as something different. So uh, th this, is, this is one of the difficulties and, and we face this as well. Uh, I'm happy to say that we faced in the, in the, in the um, past times. So, faced these um, difficulties as well in order to explain to some, I uh, would say, state organizations that uh, you have different fields. This may be uh, in, in the, in the uh, creative industries field, you may have uh, small and medium enterprises, but they, you, you shouldn't treat them as all of the other, other uh, enterprises. They are different and they can, be, uh, they can develop with different rate uh, and uh, so there, there should be a special concept uh, for the development of these fields. And I'm, uh, I'm happy to say that uh, in Azerbaijan, uh, uh, we have uh, achieved some development in, this, in these terms. Uh, we have uh, national priorities, which were announced in the early 2021. And uh, uh, there are five national priorities. And the first one of them is the economic development. And we got... Uh, invitation from the Ministry of Economy to include the creative industries field as a diff as an as a uh, would say standalone field uh, for the development of of the economy of our country, and we're working on this on this right now. So basically, I think that we 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 changes and uh, we 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 do changes, and this is uh, a field uh, from my point of view that will develop and uh, will be uh, and, and also it's very important to know that this this field will be uh, i would say the latest field to to be automatized because it is uh, tightly linked with the creativity of a person with the, with his brain functions i would say and so that's why it is very difficult to 
like the, the, the physical labor, it's it's easy to make it automotive, but with the brain functions, it's very difficult. So that's why I think that this adds another value to the creative industries fields uh, for for their development and for their focus for focusing on them in the future. So basically, uh, this um, regarding the COVID, uh, I also agree with uh, with what you're saying that there will be hopefully more money after the COVID crisis in all the fields, especially in the fields of uh, creative industries. But I, I'm also I want also to know that some of the creative industries fields uh, developed during the COVID times. So uh, and I would say that uh, some of the most resistant fields to 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 be alive during the COVID times are the creative fields and also the creative ways of I would say um, uh, of of speaking of. Uh, um, being in touch with with each other, at least, for example, with the, with Zoom, it's a new way of being in touch with this, with each other, with talking to each other. So I think that uh, at least at at the very end, uh, creativity creativity wins. Uh, and once we uh, 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 get rid of COVID, if people will be alive, the creativity will be alive as well. So so that's what I'm, I'm thinking. Um, um uh, yes yeah, so these are my thoughts if you have additional questions uh I'm, i will be very happy to answer it's good to hear um what i'd like to do now is move on um to uh, the situation we all find ourselves in the covid19 pandemic there is it's been a, a a very uh stressful time for um a lot of um cci sectors um, some are doing okay. For example, um, the uh, gaming industry and video distribution and sales have been do doing well uh, because of the pandemic. But most other areas have been, it's been catastrophic, particularly for something like performing arts. Um, when the um, pandemic finishes, um, there's the economic uh, fallout, the economic problems as a result. And what's going to happen is that um, I think it's likely that the CCIs that have been suffering are going to have to find new ways, new business models, new uh, revenue streams, um, new sources of funding, and that um, there won't be uh, plenty of money uh, around. So it's going to be a much more um, competitive uh, period and governments will almost certainly be spending their money and allocating funding according to um, post pandemic uh, priorities, you know, including sort of health, well-being, areas like that, getting the uh, economy back. Now in that in that context, and it's a, a project I've been working on for the past year or just over a year, is the um, looking at um, CCIs um, actually uh, working cross-sectorally with other areas, for example, with the health and well-being sector, um, with um, you know, other sectors. Um, and what I'd like to do, and perhaps start with Gela in this uh, instance, um, ask what his view is. What, what's the, you know, the kind of the business side? Where, how are CCI is going to recover? Is cross-sectoral um, working collaboration going to be one of the answers to the future? Uh, thank you, Terry. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, Astley for putting together this conference. Uh, I know how difficult it is to get uh, at least 100 people to attend the conference and 200 people is a great achievement. And thank you to Terry for uh, organizing such a wonderful panel. To go to back to your question, it's a million dollar question. It's a uh, probably complex question that uh, uh, warrants like, uh, like multifaceted answer, but I'll try to uh, focus on a few things. Uh, number one, um, as COVID shown to everyone, uh, the digitalization is uh, probably is going to 
Accelerate and pretty much everyone uh, working in not only cultural or creative sector, but other sectors as well. <clears throat> they will be much better off if they manage to uh, kind of adopt to this new trend. And uh, the role of the government, I would say, is uh, to help and to uh, hopefully fund uh, some strategic sectors that uh, can adopt to this new trend very fast. Uh, second thing, uh, you mentioned about uh, cross-cultural and cross-sectoral uh, cooperation. I think it's a huge uh, trend as well. A few days ago, before I left for New York City, we organized um, a so-called Creative Entrepreneurship Academy. We actually had three uh, separate sectors. Uh, we had a, a design, tourism, as well as food. And the underlying emphasis on all three sectors was how creativity can help each particular sector to develop sustainable business model. And we had very interesting uh, speakers from uh, different countries. Our Estonian colleagues were participating. And another thing is uh, that uh, creating uh, some kind of platform where people from different sectors can interact with each other and where creative people can actually offer solutions to sectors that or you mentioned, Terry, like well-being or health. It's going to be a huge trend uh, down the road. So I guess um, that's a couple of words in my answer. Thank you. What I'd like to do is now move on because we can come back to this um, cross-sectoral working um, later. But what I'd like to do is um, um, perhaps go back to Mikhail on the question of Azerbaijan now has um, cultural and creative industries development as a, a, a priority. It's a particularly a uh, priority, obviously, for the Ministry of Culture. Um, what I'd like to know is what, what do you think are the main elements that are needed and the main approaches needed for developing um, a, a cultural and creative industries um, policy um, strategy. Um, and also, um, what do you think Azerbaijan can learn from other countries who have um, been through the process? Um, and um, so, if, Michal, if you could just sort of um, start with that. For us, the, for instance, the, the, the program of the European Union, the, the European, Creative, uh, uh, European Culture Capital, was the starting point as for the city. And what's, what was super important was to really have an evidence that the culture creative industry actually really contribute to not only GDP, but to the well being and, and performance of the city and the country, which there are, there's a plenty of, plenty of research on, on that field from Ersten Young or, or whoever, Nesta, or whoever is doing those uh, uh, on the European or UNESCO is doing that on the global level. So there is a strong evidence that having a cultural creative industries, strong sector in the regions or, or the cities really contribute to the well-being and the economical performance of the, of the regions or the cities or the nations. So what I would say that the first of all is to have a proper mapping and research to absolutely understand where your strengths are, because not every country, uh, not every city has the similar, let's say, portfolio of the uh, cultural creative industries. And what I would strongly support is that, like in the case of Kosice, for instance, we really focus on visual arts and everything which is connected to digital technologies because there was a really strong development in IT sector uh, uh, parallel to the cultural creative industries. So now we work on this merger or connection between uh, CCIs and digital technologies in order to help uh, the innovations for other sectors, innovations for the, for the city development, uh, well-being and actually the general quality of life in the territory or uh, in the city. So for, for me, the first step would be to focus on, on research and have a solid data and then really roll the programs which include professional development programs for those startups and organizations, business support, 
really, really what in our case really worked well is the international collaboration programs. So helping artists uh, to use the artistic residences network, for instance, to, uh, to help organization to join international networks and to start collaboration. This means not only internationally, of course, but if Azerbaijan has the plenty of cultural operators, they should collaborate together. That's where the strength is. So I would, I would really focus, but because the, we all know the, the sector is very scattered. It's, it mostly consists of uh, individual or small uh, or micro, micro businesses. So that means that it's very fragmented. So I would really focus on somehow bring those uh, actors together so they have a stronger voice. They can really uh, work on their, their needs and programs addressing their needs. So this is something where also from the national or regional level, the programs could be, could be developed to help them uh, get access to funding, for instance, or to get the, the knowledge and capacity building programs, to get export support programs, so they can really start uh, do their production and really, really get closer to audience, for instance, or closer to customers. So this is where I would see the, the focus in support should be. It's well known, uh, well researched, the role of um, cultural and creative industries in regeneration and local development. Michal, uh, just a short while ago, um, uh, talked about this. Um, Azerbaijan has gone through a, um, a, a sort of fairly historic moment uh, very recently in terms of regaining its territories, um, which include um, Shusha, which um, was the his historical cultural capital of, um, uh, of Azerbaijan. Um, obviously, the, um, the main task in the, um, the uh, regained territories is going to be things to do with safety because of the problems of war, reconstruction, housing, and so on and so forth. But once that's done, or during the period that it's being done, to what extent can cultural and creative industries um, be um, something that actually um, gives to the uh, regained territories um, a new identity, a new um, spirit of moving forward, um, and um, also to help in uh, economic uh, sense. So let's let's start with asthma and then um, come on to Ramo. Really, I would like to say I'm very happy and all Azerbaijan uh, people is happy because we, um, we did it for the final, I, I can say. And if we talk about the, our historical place and historical cities in Karabakh and the old Karabakh and uh, at all, and uh, after I believe uh, this process now started and uh, um, a lot of the company organizations and the government and uh, people uh, um, made a lot of things for the uh, very quickly reconstruction of the uh, territory and architectural monuments, uh, museums, libraries, uh, cinemas, I don't know, theater and many things. But what I think about the creative industries, uh, I, I had a lot of interviews uh, last times uh, and um, they uh, asked me how you, um, you uh, see what happens in the futures and how they uh, can organize something for the creative people in this territory in the futures. My opinion, of course, as Shusha, as some uh, our historical uh, culture centers of Azerbaijan, and uh, for and uh, I, I believe at the, it's it's uh, Shusha as uh, some very nice uh, or Florence uh, or it's something something uh, really for everybody for us. It's something uh, culture centers of our uh, country, and. Uh, 
I suggested, or maybe I have this ideas, maybe we can uh, organize and to create in these territories uh, big creative clusters, where we can um, invite uh, uh, young, uh, very uh, active and talented people who can work together with, uh, uh, together, um, uh, who can work together and, and talk about the musicians and talk about the, some uh, artists, designer, craftsmen, and uh, uh, theater uh, uh, actors and everybody. And creative clusters, what is what is the very, uh, it is on business platforms. And I, I think it, uh, it, uh, um, it can create the, something under the, some ideas uh, as a, uh, reconstruction or renovation of our uh, old traditional and to transform in the modern uh, life and modern uh, um, reality. And of course, I'm, uh, I'm talking about the carpet productions. It's very important and um, uh, crafts uh, works because it's Shusha the, uh, and Karabakh. This is some place where it's the famous, uh, produ produced the very famous carpets. Uh, but uh, but uh, people who who can uh, who will live in this territory and how uh, can organize the, some uh, education programs for these people because um, people who lived in this territory um, now uh, it's very it's not old but it's um, middle aged people but their uh, children and their uh, next generations uh, didn't live in this territory and didn't take this uh, culture or some skills for work or something I hope uh, uh, we, uh, the, we can organize some uh, education very speedy education programs for uh, for young artists and for young people who would like to work in there with uh, uh, with um, industries or with sectors, but I believe in these territories it's very important to create the, not may, maybe it's not a big creative clusters, but um, uh, but uh, Shusha as a center of the culture of Azerbaijan. I hope we can. Um, create the big uh, uh, modern creative place uh, and the space where the people can work and to produce their very interesting products. And after we can uh, we can uh, present this product in the uh, international markets and uh, fairs and etc. Right. Thank you, Ramil. Some thoughts from you. Sorry. Uh, th uh, thank you very much, and thank you, Asmer, for for this inform for, for the information uh, that uh, that was given. Uh, indeed, I mean, uh, the what what happened in the last six to seven months in Azerbaijan is uh, something uh, that uh, that was extra extraordinary from from historical point of view of our for our country because we. Um, uh, the, the fact of occupation during this all these years it was a damage not only to our culture not only to our uh, economy but also to our uh, creativity as well so i think that the the, the fact of uh, liberation of these lands first of all uh, the fact itself will bring a lot for uh, a lot of creativity to the people uh, and creativity to the all the country uh, i would say and um, uh, what, I, what, I'm, what I'm also thinking about uh, the, the role of creativity in the future development of these regions is, is huge. First of all, as you said, that there is a matter of, uh, of uh, security and this matter will take some time to deal with because it is the, you know, that there are some mines, especially in the regions which were uh, used as a buffer zone uh, for the occupational uh, forces. Uh, and this, this, uh, a lot of people lived there. Around six, seven thousand, uh, six, seven hundred thousand people lived in those regions. So it will take some time for them to come back. But if you uh, talking about Shusha, um, Shusha is uh, 
was a cultural mecca for our country. And uh, the plan is to, to make it a cultural center uh, once more and bring all the cultural values and creative values to there and also bring, the, uh, bring creative talent to this city so that this city becomes uh, uh, once more our cultural capital and uh, uh, capital of creativity. Uh, and I, what, I, what I think is, is the, the role of the creative industries, why, why it's so important uh, for the time being, uh, if we think about this uh, past conflict, is that uh, creativity is something that uh, likes peace and creativity is something that works for peace. So basically the creativity which will be possible to, to bring to those lands will uh, be a part of uh, the process of, of putting a sustainable peace into that region. Because creativity is something that makes people cooperate, makes people come together, understand each other, understand that we all are, are human beings, whatever, uh, which, which nation, whichever nation we represent, and we can work together and we can, uh, we can collaborate and create together. So that's why I think that we have to put more efforts uh, in uh, bringing the creativity and also the creative industries and also uh, economic uh, activities that uh, highlight the value of creative industries, such as tourism, for example. Uh, so we have to bring them more and more to these uh, liberated lands and show that um, our goal is to establish peace. Our goal is to establish friendly relations and be uh, and be live in peace uh, now and for during the future time. So um, the process is going on. Now the process is uh, is the, is starting with the, as you said the the uh, uh, the uh, with the security uh, actions and also with the communications because uh, there should be many roads to be built. Um, and but the, the 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 direction is is positive, and we hope that that soon we all will be able to witness the creative development of of those regions, especially Shusha. Thank We're you. sort of um, getting close to the time when we want to um, uh, answer your questions, but I'd like to bring Gela in um, very quickly on the thing which is my perception of. Um, the value of cultural and creative industries in the former Soviet countries and indeed in Eastern Europe. And that it, for, for me, the key thing has been it, it being a modernizing force, that it basically modernizes the whole system of culture. It modernizes the understanding of culture. And uh, this in fact is, uh, as important as the any economic aspect. Uh, Gela, would you like to comment on that? Do you disagree or agree or? Absolutely agree. Uh, it's an excellent point, Harry. Uh, creative industries actually created uh, an impetus for uh, many systems of culture in former Soviet countries to look forward, look to the future. Of course, most ministries of culture, they were uh, focused on traditional uh, fields of culture, dance, music, uh, craft, and uh, most ministries focused on that, they allocated funding for that. But what creative industries uh, field, and in some cases, creative industries alliances, in particular in Georgia, managed to do is to uh, introduce new element, which is the economic element, which is uh, a monetary element, and uh, almost like a force ministries, local ministries to think more creatively. Uh, I can uh, uh, mention a couple of things. For example, in Georgia, uh, there was a, a public uh, entity which is under the Ministry of <clears throat> Culture, which is called Creative Georgia. And uh, hopefully in the, within the next few months, uh, this entity of Ministry of Culture is going to become uh, as an independent fund, uh, which will be able to fund a lot of cultural and creative projects oriented towards future. We don't know what these projects are going to be. They could be very innovative, uh, 
but uh, the money will be available for these types of projects. Uh, so again, I emphasize how important it is uh, for creative industries uh, to be uh, maybe in a, in a step with the future developments and work together with Ministries of Culture. Thank you. I could read uh, one question regarding the creative industry and whether, uh, do you think the result of the work of creative people is a tool for supporting the cultural industry or is it a tool to, for maintaining the demand of society for a given product or service? Or is it an, a, a product in itself and does not depend on the demand and the financial components? I uh, think I can ask maybe these questions. Uh, first of all, um, is this creative products? What does it mean? It's creative products. When you start to make the, some creative products you, uh, or culture products, you think about uh, uh, first of all concept ideas, but after you think about how you can, what is the financial value of these products, or uh, this is very depends because some sectors, uh, some uh, sectors really, its products is very valuable or it's very popular and mass products or something looks best like that mass product. Uh, but of course, uh, um, what I what I can uh, say, uh, some people uh, this when uh, when think about the uh, art and cultures or. Um, uh, think it looks as a hobby, or it looks as a, some um, you know, uh, activity in the free time, and it is not only the uh, audience from the audience these ideas. I'm talking about the artists and designers that they would like to uh, make some things in those sectors. And when they ask the questions, they say, "I like to do that, but I I did uh, some pro uh, I did uh, some." Uh, things in the art, but when you ask questions, it, it is a product, can you sell that? They say, no, I don't think about that. Because uh, we have not now the understand, uh, this, is, uh, this is what does it mean culture products and what does it mean the art pieces or uh, can you sell your art pieces and must you think about the financial values of the, your art pieces? Or if you would like to make only your um, impression of some things and to do the very uh, creative uh, pieces, uh, it's really very important to uh, uh, to show with uh, uh, dif big differences between that, uh, because I, I can see that a lot of the participants from the regions and a lot of the peoples uh, from the. Uh, uh, education sectors and from the schools and people who work in the art educations. And uh, of course, it's with questions, it's really uh, very, uh, very interesting for me. And a lot of questions, it's not, not only from the uh, uh, people, it's from the artists. Why I must to think about the financial value of my products? Because it is my creativity. Uh, it is my uh, soul impressions and something with that. Of course, when they start the designer, craftsman, and etc., in the same things, because the, our, uh, our um, craft traditional uh, uh, were very, very uh, old. And some old craftsmen still say, I don't think about uh, uh, par price, or I don't think because it is my. Um, it is my skills and it is, I, I kept the, my uh, traditional, I try to make that, but its product is not very valuable in the same in modern uh, market. In that, it's not realistic product which we can sell, in which they are sell in the market, the international market, and the same time in the local market. Thank you. Um, we've got very little time, so I suggest we move on to uh, another question, Asli. As yes, we have a, a question, well actually it's in English and it's about electronic dance music pr production and whether there is, uh, how to make it popular in Azerbaijan. Maybe uh, Ramil could speak about it, or maybe Gala, because uh, Georgia is very well known about its electronic music culture. Uh, if you talk about the music uh, music industries and such as music fields such as for example EDM or some 
electro or some other types of music, the most important thing is the access to global markets and access to, uh, to markets of, of this music where uh, audiences, a lot of people can listen to it and uh, the, it can make, uh, uh, it can be more popular, I would say. Uh, for example, if there is an, a musician um, who is uh, who is a good musician, but he is not, he doesn't know how to promote himself. He doesn't know how to uh, where to put his music, or uh, he doesn't have an infrastructure, local infrastructure to promote uh, what he's doing. That that is uh, that, that it means that he will not develop. I can bring you an, a, a good example of the latest success of a person who was just uh, who made a Grammy, if I'm not wrong, out of nothing. Is the uh, Kazakh. Uh, Kazakh musician who was, uh, um, I forgot his name, but he's just uh, 20 years old, working in the, in the train uh, station or something and doing some, making some music at home. And just in several months, he, he won a Grammy Award. Uh, if I'm not wrong, it was Grammy. Uh, uh, so just for one remix that he did. So that uh, means that he had an access to market he could promote himself through uh, Spotify, if I'm not wrong. And uh, though he, he became very popular and uh, was first person from an ex-Soviet country to, to win this kind of award. So basically, uh, it's the same for, uh, for our country. We have to, first of all, have, a, like, as a country, as a, as a, as a, uh, a government, I would say, we, we should support uh, ways so that people, local people and local talent has access to global markets. That's, I think, the, the first line. And, the, and then comes like trainings, um, then comes uh, local infrastructure, then comes um, uh, the, the activities, local activities. So these are uh, also some, 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 uh, uh, some things that should be taken care of. But the first thing is, is the access, I would say. Hello, you know, Maybe I can add a few words about electronic music. <laughs> Thank you, Rami. Um, uh, just to, uh, to go back to history, maybe 10 to 12 years ago, what put uh, Tbilisi on a map of European map, at, at least uh, of the electronic music, was a connection, connection of this uh, DJ uh, he had with his colleagues from Berlin. Berlin was, uh, of course, uh, like a capital of electronic music. And uh, what this guy did, he quickly managed to introduce this music in one of the most well-known Georgian bars uh, or like nightclubs. And second uh, point was that uh, Georgia started introducing a lot of cheap lines between European Union countries and Tbilisi and Kutaisi. So a lot of uh, young people who had interest in electronic music, they could do easily for like 40 or 50 euros they can fly to Tbilisi or Kutaisi and uh, listen to this music. And the third one that something Ramin mentioned is, uh, again, I go back to digitalization. Basically right now, anywhere in the world, in Baku or in Kazakhstan, you can create uh, uh, something valuable and you have an opportunity to sell it uh, around the world. If the music is good, if your art is good, everyone is going to buy it. Uh, we probably don't have time to speak about it, but uh, maybe next time, mostly we can talk about so-called non-tangible, uh, uh, what do you, NFTs? You know, these are like a digital uh, tokens that uh, you can sell your uh, digital art to. So this is like uh, commercializing your art forms through digital means. Thank you. Uh, sorry, uh, I just wanted to add, it's very important, very interesting thing about this NFTs, which just occurred yes. several months ago. Uh, I know that some also famous people uh, started selling their tweets. Yes, yes. That's, uh, <laughs> that's I think, very, very interesting. I mean, it's a next step. I mean, uh, uh, people, uh, I think, should believe in them, themselves, understand that wherever you are located, you can be in Azerbaijan, in uh, some... Uh, Asian, African, any country, if you have access and you know how okay. to go, uh, you can have a global audience and you can exactly. make a exactly. change. Uh, yeah, what, what NFT is just to uh, basically what it does, it authenticates your art. It becomes only yours. 
So even if it's a five second video or one minute uh, musical video, everyone should know that it's yours and then people can uh, pay for it. So it's very important. Right. Michal, do you want to have the last word? Because we're coming to the end of uh, our session, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, just with the electronic music, I think it's very much about also uh, the infrastructure for festivals or the clubs or the scene uh, uh, in, in the certain city or territory. This is what, what's very important because what the, the shift of the music market thanks to sharing platforms, Spotify and everything, really, really like just moved the attention to the live music or the experience, the, like the, the festivals really bef obviously before COVID, but after COVID, this will be really, really something where, where a lot of potential also for the territorial development uh, is situated. Yeah, well, we've come to the end, I think, Asti. Um, I'd like to thank our pan panelists, starting with Asma um, and Ramel from the uh, Ministry. Um, Michal, thank you for participating. You've made a very valuable, interesting contribution. And we all know a little bit about Koshitsa. Yeah. Um, those who don't uh, can go online and uh, find out more. And Gela, um, delightful uh, hearing from you and um, hope we'll be in contact, uh, all of us uh, again before too long. And Ashley, uh, thank you very much for um, organizing this and um, all power to your elbow to continue the program. Yeah, thank you very much. Right. Thank you Bye. very much. Uh, Bye. Thanks a lot, uh, Terry and all the speakers. It's a great honor for us to have you today.